Hey everybody, so I just explained to you via slides on how to do take a bite with the SOM gauge, but now I'm going to kind of do a demo for you. I really like to use the snore test technique as I call it, and so I do have a guinea pig. Um, I bet she's not breaking any records for her snoring, but she's, she's willing. So um, when I ha lay the patient back, we just kind of have the patient do a snore noise. Can you go ahead and give me a snore noise for me? Okay. Wow, you purr. You don't really <laughs> snore. Um, I, I can go on record for that. So um, what we do with the SOM gauge is we make sure that it's set up correctly, that it's inserted into the gauge itself. The bite fork is a uniform three millimeters so that we don't we get the proper amount of separation and we don't get those emails and calls from the lab saying there's not enough vertical. We want it to flow and slide easily. So we keep this screw here loose so that it slides. Now this lower screw, we kind of keep tight because it's more of a universal. The lower interiors are going to fit right into this section right here. The only time I adjust this is if the patients have a lot of wear or crowding or even angling of the teeth. I use my middle finger here to stabilize the fork so it doesn't go flying off. And then I kind of scoop the fork into the mouth and go ahead and bite down. So I line it up, I scoop it in, I line it up to the top teeth. So the midline here is pretty much midline to the face, not necessarily the teeth. And I make sure that the lower anteriors are all the way up hitting the base of that gauge into that area there. Perfect. And then I say it this way. While biting down, go ahead and bring your lower jaw forward as far as you can go. And then I do make the reading here. So she is go as far forward as a positive five. And now while still biting down, go ahead and drop backwards. Go the opposite way. Good. And she is back to a negative seven. All right, go ahead and open for me. And so basically, Sam goes from a negative seven to a positive five. So that makes a total range of motion of 12 millimeters if we add these numbers together. So her range of motion from the farthest back to furthest forward is 12 millimeters. Now we're going to take an average of that based on the patient's symptoms, um, their jaw, if they're loosey-goosey and happy, they might do more like 70%. Um, if they have TMJ issues and they're real tight and, and, and we might do more like 50. This is a guesstimate right now. So at 70% of Sam's range of motion, we're going to do a little math here, that's a total of 8.4 millimeters. So we're going to go from this negative number, the most retrusive or furthest back position, and move forward 8 millimeters. Now don't worry about the 0.4, you're just going to do round numbers to keep it simple. So if we go from a negative 7 and we go forward 8 millimeters, we're going to set the gauge at a positive 1. So we're from a negative 7 to a positive 1, I'm going to put the bite fork at that positive 1, make sure we're in the right positive versus negative, and then we tighten the screw. Okay, so that fork isn't sliding. Now we're going to come back to the mouth. Sam, can you go ahead and make that snore noise for me again? I'm burning. Okay. Now I'm going to place the fork in. Remember, I scoop it in, line it up with the midline, and go ahead and bite down. And go ahead and make... Oh, just kidding. I have it in the wrong spot. I'm like, why are you so retrusive? I don't, yeah. Okay. And there you go. Okay, now go ahead and give me that snore noise again. You getting better breaths? Mm -hmm. Yeah, try really hard. Yeah, good work. Okay, so that's good. That would be a great starting position. Um, and then you can play with it. You can go back or forwards and have the patient kind of snore and see where maybe you see um, kind of the best breaths. But the big advantage of the SOM gauge is that we can also variate the, the vertical. Some people do need more vertical height, more room for the tongue. Now, most of the time I try to minimize vertical, but we're just gonna, um, for, for sake of um, showing you, we're gonna play with that. 
So the way that you adjust the vertical is this screw right here. I'm going to loosen that. And on this ramp, there's numbers. You can hardly see them. My 42-year-old eyes can still see them, though. And you can adjust this vertical part right here. Oop. So see how this slides? So we put the line to kind of where it's even with that vertical part and this would be a vertical of six so i'm just going to adjust that i know you can't see it on the camera real well talk to my boss about um a budget for some real video <laughs> okay so we're going to do a, a vertical of six and go ahead and put that in and go ahead and bite down. And we'll, sh you'll see that uh, automatically you can't bite down as far away. Mm -hmm. You notice the difference? Go ahead and give us a snore. Okay, good. And then I'm gonna go to a po uh, vertical of eight just to see. And what I like to look at is if we have separation of teeth, is it gonna cause too much vertical where we don't get lip seal? Lip seal is really important. And go ahead. You can see how open you are in that, huh? Um, go ahead and give me a snore. Good. Barely any noise there, mm -hmm. huh? Go ahead and relax your lips for me. But you also can't, you can notice how you won't be able to get your lips up and around an appliance. Okay, so we're going to go back down to four. Again, I like to kind of keep the, the um, vertical at a minimum for lip seal and comfort. And the only time I really add vertical is if the patient still has a little snoring and if I get improvement. So let's go ahead and put that in. Go ahead and bite down. Relax the lips. Okay. And go ahead and open. So now when we do the bite registration, depending on if you're scanning or sending this in, um, we're, we scan, so I'm just going to do a just a few dollops and the reason why I do this is mostly to stabilize the jaw because if the patient has to do all the work to hold it in place there must they get muscle fatigue and movement so we just do that in the back there so we can still get the buckle bite with the scanner if I was sending it to the lab I would get cuss tips on um, all the posterior teeth so that's kind of how we use the SOM gauge, and now we're going to practice on each other.